Hello guys, happy new year and welcome back to Not Just Mecca after these few weeks of Christmas holidays. It's Marco here and today we talk about how to speed paint the Corvus Cabal, putting the accent on mood and storytelling. I really missed you guys and I didn't realize in a conscious level how making videos became such a major part of my week, ironically more than painting now, so these have been some really strange holidays. Soon you'll see a lot of cool new stuff here on the channel, so don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. But I wanted to start the new year with one of my classic and most successful series, so we can stretch together the painting muscles with a really fast, really simple and cool project. This video will make the joy of every wargamer looking for a super quick and unusual way of painting, with techniques that you can transfer on any kind of model, but with some interesting reasoning for painters looking for ambience and atmosphere. As always, I like to start defining the concept of what I'm going to paint. This is really important to create a solid and inspired mental image of how you want your models to look like. And I'm not talking only about the color scheme, but also about the mood and the general sensation that the models can produce. It's important for me to emphasize that this kind of reasoning is not only something you apply to display models, but you can and you should use this mindset also to create more striking and interesting gaming models, or to define a better look for your armies with really just a bit of extra effort in planning. So here is my process with the Cabal. I wanted to put the ascent on a specific kind of light and mood, rather than on a scheme, to effectively show you an approach where the color scheme is more like a consequence of these choices. Extreme light and environmental conditions are the best options to easily convey a strong moody look, so I plan to set them under a cool moonlight in a snowy environment. To really push the idea I use white as my main tone, with a really high and strong contrast. As a consequence of these choices, I ended up with the concept of white winter ninjas, with just a touch of red to add a bit of Assassin's Creed aesthetic in the mix, that I think really suits them. Ok, let's start doing some serious work. Here is my Corvus Cabal, built straight out of the box, with just a bit of putty here and there to fix some gaps, and based for gaming. I put the heroes on an higher ground, to help them pop out more compared to the basic troops, and spot them better on the battlefield and I prepared an ice base for the Shrike Talon. If you want to see how I made it, check the video up here. The idea is to underline that he is the expert of difficult terrains, able to reach even the most dangerous position to get his target. Since I'm starting painting this model with a finished base, it's better to protect it with some silly putty. It's a great tool for masking difficult irregular volumes, and you can find it in any toy store with different names, but it's always some variation of putty. As always, I use a Molotov paint as my primer, but for the first time on video, I will not use black. I want to set a cool main light, so to create my shadows, I choose a warm tone to give something more to my final general contrast. Check this video up here to expand and know more about this idea. This purple violet is perfect for the job because it will give a warm sensation in contrast with the tone I'll apply later, but without being technically very warm, like a red for example, so the perfect kind of spectrum to convey the image of a land of ice and snow. Next step is to start building my lights with a strong jump in value and tone. I use cerulean blue ink for this step, the main reason for this choice is the tone itself. I want sharp shadows almost with their own shape, so I'm not looking for transparency effects here, and even if I wanted that kind of properties, I would have to thin it down properly because, as you can see here, it's marked like opaque, so it has a powerful coverage like any other standard acrylic when sprayed or simply used with a brush. The main advantage of using an ink in this particular case is to have something that you can use in the airbrush directly from the bottle, and again, because it's simply the exact tone I had in mind for this step. I spray this mid-tone with an angle of 45 degrees all around the models, to start creating volumes and contrast. This is my general diffused cold light. It comes from above, but to give the idea of its soft diffusion is not a strong zenithal light eating perpendicularly from the top. This is something you can easily do with an 0.3 or even an 0.4 needle, and it doesn't rely on crazy skills with the airbrush, so you can just have fun and don't worry too much about precision and control, even on these tiny models. 
As you can see, we have already some interesting volumes and contrast with a minimal effort. Next step is to enhance this progression with an highlight, and I'm going to use white ink for this. White ink is another opaque tone able to efficiently cover black with a single pass, but this time I'll change a bit its properties to make it more transparent. I use airbrush thinner and matte varnish to dilute the highly pigmented ink into something much more translucent and gentle on the tones I already have in place. As always, check the consistency, the coverage and the transparency of the paint I'm mixing, because drops and recipes are really meaningless. I use the varnish to kill the natural shine of the ink. It's harmless while priming, but this is my final light and I don't want it glossy. I spray this mix with a sharp angle from above, almost zenithal this time, but a bit more open and diffused. Thanks to this dilution, the first passes will have a very subtle effect on the previous layers, creating a soft gradient from cerulean blue to white. Changing the angle and adding more layers in the proper high spots, I easily obtain a strong bright white in the upper parts, but the gradient is super super smooth. <laughs> My camera always goes crazy when it comes to record white, and in this shot it's difficult to see the contribute of cerulean blue, but in person there is a nicely readable progression from purple to white. Time to add a couple of secondary base tones. These days I'm testing the Molted Metal line by Darkstar Miniatures. They are water-based acrylic metallic paints with super fine metallic pigments. In an extremely stable suspension very similar to alcohol-based paints like Tamiya for example, and with a similar realistic look when uh, they are dry. I'm having a lot of fun with them and I want to show you how they behave. I create a mix of steel tone and turquoise ink. This metal color has a neutral hue, so it's very easy to alter its general feel adding different tones in it. The turquoise will give me the cold sensation I'm looking for, and with the properties of these two paints mixed together, I create something similar to a fluid metallic contrast paint. Mixing metallic paints with inks, you keep the shiny reflective finish, adding tones but keeping the space between the metallic pigments transparent. I don't have a precise explanation for this behavior, that's probably due to the weight of the metal flakes in suspension with the super fine pigments of the ink, but the mix in a single pass tends to look like a metal already shaded with a wash, full of depth and a couple of different layers of lights and shadows. I use contrast flesh tearer red for the straps of the equipment. This will add a nice interesting touch of warmth. I noticed only later that all the models have the straps in the exact same position, so they look like wearing an official standardized uniform, so I'm going to say that this was my plan for the beginning. And I use Vallejo Game Ink Skin Wash for the light armor on the arms. I love to paint quick leather effects using inks because they create almost by themselves nice irregular drying pattern with a realistic leathery look and a satin shiny finish. And I love this color in particular because it's quite transparent and neutral with just a bit of yellow inside. Thanks to this translucency it perfectly adapts to every surface, showing the tones of the previous layers and merging naturally with them and this is really important when you try to work with a coherent specific light on the whole model. I also used a bit of Space Wars Grey to create a bit of separation between the fur details and the feathers. And here we are with the basic scheme, volume and color modulation in place, ready for the step that will really bring everything to life. I'm still under the two hours of work and every step until here was very easy and relaxed, even with the level of details of these models. Let's take a moment to thank my best patrons! This is all because of your incredible support, and I already know that we'll do crazy things together this year. Thanks a million guys. Time for oils, and in this case they are one of the main steps, not only a speed paint trick to give dark definition to the model. The base of my palette is the usual made of burnt amber, magenta and black, dark tones able to interact without too many risks with every possible tone used on the models. Paints grey, pretty similar to what uh, we know as uh, Space Wolf grey, with these uh, blue purple sensations, so perfect for this kind of work, and this very light turquoise blue to add uh, icy tones here and there, especially on the feathers. I prepare a pool of diluted paint for each color, using simple, cheap, odorless white spirit from the hardware store, leaving only the blue turquoise for later. 
I'm slowly bringing you closer and closer to oil painting. And this is one of those little steps. The underpainting is becoming less and less important. Put there more for the volumes than anything else, and the main tones are starting to come from the oils. I keep magenta quite diluted. I want it to be more a filter for the skins, while black and paints grey are a bit thicker, because I'll apply them in the lower parts, in the extreme shadows and sharp details, so I need something with a stronger impact on the surface. Yeah, I don't varnish. I explained why in the last pit painting video, but I'm going to make a proper video about this topic so I can link people directly to it and bust this silly myth that you need to varnish models. I'm going to use all the tones at the same time, not one by one in separate steps. The idea is to let the dark tones merge naturally together on the models, creating natural flowing shades between them and the modulation I have already established. This is similar to working with the wet on wet technique, but using a color that can stay wet as long as you need. Pretty cool if you start thinking to the possibilities. Don't be afraid of oil paints, they are very easy to control, you don't have to rush any step and you can erase any mistake with some white spirit. I apply them loosely. White spirit has a very low surface tension and diluted paint tends to naturally flow into the details, but even after the application you can move the paint and adjust the brush strokes directly on the model. Also, I want these tones to give an extra layer of visual interest to the colors I already have on the models, so I need them to interact with the whole surface, and this is one of the main reasons why we don't want a layer of varnish separating them. I follow the map of contrast I established from the beginning, applying thicker layers in the lower parts and in all the shadows areas, just filtering the upper parts to maintain their values almost intact. This will be clearer after the cleaning step. Only when I'm done with the dark tones on all the models, I mix the light blue turquoise. And I mix two pools with different consistencies, one more diluted to easily run inside the details, and one thicker to easily grab the surface in difficult spots without deep or sharp elements like the equipment and the trophies in the back. All the colors are still totally playable, but most of the white spirit that is highly volatile is already evaporated, so they stay in place without a tendency to move by capillarity anymore. So I know that when I apply the turquoise, the different colors will not blend together without my intervention. This will create a stronger separation between the various elements and a sharper final definition. It's very, very easy to add extra contrast and create a smooth transition to dark tones, just putting different hues one next to each other and fusing the line between them with a couple of gentle brush strokes. When you have done painting the last model, you can start cleaning the first one. That's all the time you need to wait between the two steps. It's very easy to remove the oils with this timing, so you don't need to apply any real strength. In this project I used oils as my main source of shades, nuances and complex extra tones, so cleaning becomes a crucial step where you decide what's remaining on the surface and in the final product and what will be erased. So this time I want to put the ascent more on what I'm going to clean and how and why I'm doing it. I start with a quick general 360 degrees cleaning using only dry q-tips. This is only to take off the very extreme unwanted excess, like big smudges or unwanted pools. Cleaning an area means that you are highlighting the spot, so you need to choose carefully where to clean, especially when you start adding white spirit to the mix, that will erase almost completely the oil layer in that spot, bringing back the original value. But you are lucky because your general map of lights and shadows is already on the model from the beginning, set with the airbrush, so you need only to follow the map enhancing the contrast in the highlights. And here we are after the cleaning. Again, the white balance is a bit all over the place, but the pictures will give them justice. 
I kept the bases in the white of the first steps until now because it was a good reference of the look of the final snow cover bases. But before moving to the wet palette for the final extreme edge highlights, I need some separation and a base layer for the actual ground, so I simply give a quick coat of contrast wildwood on everything. And for those who asked, here is how you clean your palette from oils. Paper, rubbing and maybe a splash of white spirit for the final pass. Time for the wet palette. I have Chimera Black, Green, Magenta, the new red inspired by Danilo Cartacci, Winsor & Newton Heavy Body White and Chimera White to have access to two different consistencies of white and only at the end I realized that I didn't have a blue on the palette so here is Phthalo Blue Green Shade. These are all the tones I need for the limited palette of this project. I mix a bluish tone similar to what I have on the model and from this base I create a simple light gradient towards higher values. Similar process for green and magenta, while for the red is pretty much a single highlight tone because I want to keep its warmth and brightness at the minimum. In this stage we have all the shadows and the dark lining we need, so the objective here is to add the extreme lights, the edge highlights everywhere you have a strong edge, and if you have time and patience, some uh, little sharp interesting details here and there. For this reason I need only these high values. It took me only 3 hours to arrive at the end of the cleaning phase, so even respecting my self-imposed limit of 5 hours, I have all the time I need to paint these details. I use lines, dots and different brush strokes to create textures and the sensation of material everywhere I can. Again, here I have extra time and I'm going to use it all to make the models more interesting and push the contrast to the maximum. Similar reasoning for the metal parts, using the original Dark Star steel and Vallejo metal color Duraluminium for the sharper, shiny edges. I almost only edge highlighted the metal parts with a bit of dotting here and there on the flat surfaces of weapons and buckles to create extra movement and subtle battle damages, but I rarely put the ascent on the weapons trying to keep most of the attention on the core of the models. I was having a lot of fun adding the finer details, so I used all the time I had. <laughs> and actually I could have easily gone on, without considering that I still had to complete the bases. I used my homemade snow mix for the bases. Check this video up here for all the secrets of my crazily resistant snow for gaming bases and how to apply it. But you can't leave your snow just in this completely pure white, especially because the idea is this to be a night scene, under the powerful light of a full moon, but still with the tones and the drama of a cold night scene. I use Ethermatic Blue in the airbrush for the first shade on the base. I want some evident contrast, so this tone will be almost a mid-tone, leaving the white as an highlight. Followed by Magos Purple for the strong shadows. I use it also for the shadow projected by the warriors on the base. This is something we tend to forget, but really important to create the illusion of strong zenithal lights even in the surroundings of the model, not only on the model itself. Never forget the impact of a good base with a good relation with the model. Here is the result. I thought to be able to close the project under the 4 hours, but I was totally having fun adding details and I simply wasn't able to stop early. I really wanted to show you this kind of super loose, super simple approach because in the last speed painting videos I pushed a bit more on a very fine and precise use of airbrush and oils. But even if you don't have this kind of uh, control and knowledge over these tools and materials, you can still have uh, a lot of easy fun starting playing with them. And probably enjoying their use even more if you are a beginner or a war gamer, struggling to obtain a quick stress-free result, but that can still uh, leave your friends with their mouths open when they see your warband or even your new army. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. Remember that you can always ask me anything down below with a comment and you can follow my projects during the week using one of my socials. And if you want to support the channel and my work, check the Patreon page and its rewards or ask for a commission. See you next week, guys.